Hello and welcome to the Monday, February 26, 2018 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. First, a couple quick notes about diaries from this weekend. DDA wrote about a slightly better, simpler way to download malware via Tor. He had a diary about this a few weeks ago, but this new method makes things a little bit easier easier. Secondly, Guy wrote about black hole advertising sites with Pi-hole. Now, Pi-hole is sort of a sinkhole that you can install in your network You and then you can redirect black hole sites to this sinkhole. Of course, Guy had something like this with his DNS black hole. This is something that you would use to collect data from outbound connections. So it's not your honeypot that collects in Bound connections, but instead you're trying to figure out what potentially malicious sites your users are connecting to and what data they would be sending to these malicious sites. Now, usually try to stay a little bit away from legal issues and the like, but there is an interesting settlement that was reached between Tax Slayer, a tax preparation company, and the Federal Trade Commission, the FTC. The problem here was credential stuffing. Now, uh, that term is a little bit new and it's really sort of a variation of a password brute force attack in that an attacker, instead of just randomly guessing passwords, is using not just usernames and passwords, but other identifying information that was leaked in breaches at other companies. So the problem here is how do I protect my own site from an attacker that uh, gained access to my users username and password via a third party site that I don't control. Well, uh, the FTC apparently is the opinion you should do something about it. Now, I haven't had access to the full text of uh, the settlement. I'm just linking in the show notes to a summary. Some of the issues that come up here are fairly specific and pretty much already best practices. Like, for example, requiring strong passwords. But again, this doesn't really help if the user uses the same strong passwords on different sites. And now, one interesting term they apparently are using here is risk-based authentication methods, which uh, does hint to things like multi-factor authentication for accounts that, for example, hold important data like financial data, but also things, and I often see that missing, where you notify your customer if an if if a change is made to the account, uh, like for example, address, passwords, security questions and the like, also not validating the email address at account creation. Now, uh, where it gets a little bit more tricky here, according to summary, is that they also require the use of readily available tools to prevent attempted credential stuffing. And that's really not specified here. Within the summary, they're suggesting IP blacklisting, which is something that I think just doesn't work, but certainly some brute force detection by IP address, not just by username, works here. Last Last week, Troy Hunt also released a list of leaked passwords, again, very large lists. I think I mentioned it and you could, for example, download those lists and alert customers if their password is on the list. Now, a better way would even be if you get a hold of a list of usernames and password combinations. Troy Hunt's list has only the passwords, not the username. And then you could proactively lock accounts if their password was leaked. I actually start as a little test on the United Storm Center website. If you happen to log in to the site and your password was listed in Troy Hunt's list 10 or more times, you should see an alert. It's a little test and uh, any feedback is welcome at this point. I'm not enforcing that at this point, really just uh, to see sort of uh, what users think about this feature. Also, there was an other complaint by the FTC against Tax Slayer from 2015. This appears to be a new and different case. 
Well, and Mirai keeps evolving. Fortnite found yet another version of it. They're calling it the OMG bot because the letters OMG are used in as part of the fingerprint code that's sort of typical for Mirai. This latest version is so far interesting in that it does set up an HTTP and a SOX proxy on infected systems. Have seen this quite a bit in prior attacks against sort of routers and the like. And of course, this is an attacker building a network, an attack platform to then launch additional attacks later on. And well, this is it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.